on to empirical and molecular formulas. This video will cover exclusively empirical formulas and we'll cover, cover molecular formulas next time. But you got to make sure that you understand empiricals first. So empirical formulas, EF for short, is the formula of a compound, but it's the smallest ratio of atoms. So this does not tell you how many atoms are actually present in the compound, but simply the smallest ratios of those atoms to one another. So there's a couple of simple steps you can follow in order to find the empirical formula of a substance. And they are as follows. Step one, convert whatever you've got to moles. In the examples that you'll see, subsequently you'll notice that sometimes they give us grams, sometimes they give us liters, sometimes they give us particles. But, courtesy of our molar map that we have covered in the past, I can convert any of those three things to moles. So you do whatever you got to do to get that whatever the problem gives you to moles. After that, it's going to give you a number. You're going to divide by the smallest value uh, whatever, of whatever your answers were from this section. You're going to divide each of them by the smallest value. And then you're going to round reasonably if you get nice pretty decimals that come out 0.999 or 0.0001 or even 0.1. But if you end up with a decimal that is between 0.3 and 0.7, you're going to end up having to multiply all of your values um, by some number to try to get for a whole number. When you're trying to figure out the subscripts in this last step here, be on the lookout for polys. Uh, one other scenario I should mention is occasionally you will be given percents. So it might say instead of in this example, it gives us grams of chromium. It might say that a sample can, contains 17.3% chromium and 35.5% chlorine. Well, all you do in a scenario like that is assume that this is out of 100 grams and you simply replace the percent sign with grams, and that's it. But let's go ahead and try this one. Let's attempt to find the empirical formula for a sample containing 17.3 grams chromium and 35.5 grams of chlorine. So step one says to convert to moles. Whenever I do these, I tend to label them like this and move in a line across the page so that I know which number pertains to which comp or which element. Otherwise, this gets pretty complicated pretty quickly. So 17.3. Since I have a mass, I need the formula mass to convert to moles. There is my formula mass of chromium. Chlorine, 35.5, divided by his formula mass, which is 35.45, equals. Another thing on uh, empirical formulas is it's really good to have a periodic table that is more precise than the one that I'm using. You really want one that has more than two decimal places on the, uh, the masses on the periodic table. Similarly, when you're writing out these answers, you want to carry out as many decimal places as you can stand. Four or five is a good place to start. Let me zoom that in a little bit so you can see better. It's a habit of mine of writing small. Let's see, let's divide out the other one here real quick. 35.45 divided, oops. So notice, of these two numbers, this is the smaller. So this was our step one. We converted to moles. Step two, I'm going to divide both of my numbers by the smallest, this guy. If you have one of these monstrous, monst monstrous bleh, TI-80 whatevers, using the store button on this one is great. All right, so step three tells us to round reasonably or multiply if we get something between 0.3 and 0.7. This guy, I don't have to round. It just is a one. This one, I can round to just a three. It's just a smidge over three, so that's all good. These numbers here, these are your subscripts. So when I come up with my compound, I'm going to write CR with a subscript of 1, which I don't really need to write. Can you see that sort of kind of bottom corner? Sorry. CL for my second compound, 
with a subscript of 3. So my empirical formula for a compound containing 17.3 grams chromium and 35.5 grams chlorine is in fact CrCO3. Let's do another example. This one involves one of those non-typical things like I mentioned before. It gives me grams, grams, and liters. But we're going to approach it the same way. Nickel. I'll zoom out a bit. Hopefully I can break my own habit and write bigger. All right. So nickel here, 2.35, and I'm going to divide that by the formula mass, courtesy of my periodic table, 58.69. I like to go ahead and write all my numbers down before I start plugging them into my calculator. Uh, if you do not, that is just fine. The order is simply not going to, or the order is not going to mess up how this works for you. Now, this last one, we have to be careful. This was formula mass. This one is liters. So I'm going to write out the full boxes for this one just so you can see it. So for this one, I'm actually going to have to divide by 22.4 instead of a formula mass to get my value. So let's see here. 2.35 divided by 58.69, big long number. 0 0.040041. My next one, 0 0.721 divided by 12.01. 0.06003 and 4.03 divided by 22.4 0 0.17991 so there is our first step we have in fact converted to moles our second step is going to be to divide by the smallest so of these three numbers this one is the smallest so I'm going to divide all three by this 0.04 number. All right, so let's get these number crunchings going. This one is one, that one's easy. Zero, six, zero, zero, three, divided by 0 0.04, zero, zero, four, one, gives me 1.4993. And my last one, 7991 divided by 040041, whoops, there we go, gives me 4.4931. Now this is the part where I said round reasonably or multiply. Notice that both of these numbers are really close to half, 1.5 and 4.5. So I can't round either of these, they're kind of smack in the middle there. So I'm going to have to multiply everything by the same number. These two numbers, I both have to multiply by 2 to get them to a whole number, which means I have to multiply everything by 2. You don't get to pick and choose. You multiply everything or nothing. Okay? So 2 times 1 is 2. This is 1.5 times 2, which is roughly 3. 4.5 times 2 is right about 9. So these are my subscripts. So this one's going to look a little bit different. I have Ni2, C3, O, 9. Now if we look at this here, this little piece, circle it in a different color, this little bit right here, I can actually pull a 3 out of that. So this is where I meant look four polys. So if I remove a three, hey look at that. It's actually nickel three carbonate. So this is the empirical formula of a substance that involves a poly. So this is about the, the only weird scenarios that you can get in finding empirical formulas is a situation where they don't give you everything in grams, they give it to you in percents or particles or liters. Um, this first step just requires you to convert it to moles, whatever you need to do. After that, divide by the smallest, 
Lastly, and this is the part that hangs people up, is if I don't get nice pretty numbers like this or 0.199999 or 1.0001, something that can be easily rounded, anytime you end up with a decimal in this third step here that is between generally 0.3 and 0.7, you're going to have to use multiples in order to get you to... Uh, closer to a whole number that you can actually use. And even these, I went ahead and rounded them to the subscripts that I knew I was going to need. So that then you just bump your rounding back one step and those are what you put as your subscripts. Be on the lookout for polys where you can remove a, a common factor like this guy. I can remove the three in order to get a familiar poly. And in our next video we will take this one step further and find molecular formulas.